Shadow and I have come to a true Bortle One dark site, high on the Colorado Plateau, 6,000 feet in elevation, a place called Kodachrome Basin. It was given the name by the National Geographic Society in 1949 because of the brilliant variations in colors of the sandstone and the remarkable unique structures, sandstone chimneys, a mystery as to how they were formed. We'll show you a few of them. You can see these chimneys. There's over 70 of them in the area. As we look around, it's not hard to see why the National Geographic Society picked the name Kodachrome Basin. Look at the variety of brilliant colors. And again, chimney after chimney after chimney after chimney after chimney after chimney. It's incredible. One of the prevailing theories on how these were formed is that if you look at it, it looks a lot like, you know, a chimney or a pipe of a geyser. And that is indeed the theory is that tectonic forces combined with geothermal activity, water found its way up through these pipe-like structures and brought with it other elements that mixed with the sand and the limestone and so forth and created a form of cement. And then it hardened and it was harder than all the sandstone around. So as the years passed and the sandstone would erode, what remained behind were the harder chimney-like structures from those events eons ago. It's hard to find a true Bortle One dark site. You know, there's Bortle One to two-ish, you know, but this is not a Bortle One and a half. It's not a Bortle One and a quarter. This is a true Bortle One. Now, it took me about three and a half hours to drive here and I couldn't have picked a, a worse time with regards to, it's a full moon tonight, but it's the end of October and my schedule between now and the end of the year, this is the only chance I would have to get out this far. And also when winter hits here, 6,000 feet above sea level, high on the Colorado Plateau, the daytime temperatures off don't exceed uh, freezing. So, I don't want to come in the dead of winter, that's for sure. So it's kind of now or never. So I'll have to work around the moon, and I will. But it does limit which targets we can go after. We'll want to go after targets that are in the opposite direction of the moon. So we're going to wait to pick the target tonight based on the clouds and the moon. So it's going to be a little bit of a mystery for both of us what we're going to go after. All of this area was once an ancient inland seabed. And all of this sandstone is the result of layers from that era reaching back over 180 million years ago. I'm coming, little buddy. I'm coming. Here's another one. It's like walking through a fairy tale land or something. The big one behind me there, that's called Mammoth Spire. And then those of you that are familiar with some of the national parks in Southern Utah, do you see those cliffs way in the back, the red ones? Way, way in the back. That's part of Bryce Canyon National Park. 
So I'll give you some idea of where we are. That's Bryce Canyon National Park, way off there in the distance. And then there's Little Lion King overlooking his domain. It's getting a little cloudier. That's not good. The forecast as of yesterday was that it would get a little cloudier and then clear up. Crossing my fingers, crossing my fingers. So not knowing for sure the scene conditions, the cloud cover, but knowing that there's going to be a full moon and I know where that where the trajectory of the moon is. So I got to go in the opposite direction of that. I'm thinking of going for the elephant trunk nebula because it looks a lot like all of these chimneys that we're seeing. It's a big, brilliant, beautiful nebula that has a feature a lot like these. And we'll talk more about it if we can get on it. I'm not even sure if that's going to work out yet until we get to tonight, but that's what I'm leaning towards. I, if I remember correctly, uh, IC 1396, I think it is. I have to look it up. I can't remember exactly the catalog number, but it's known as the Elephant Trunk Nebula. So the clouds have blocked the sun. Great big dark cloud. So I'm not sure if this view is going to show as beautiful as it looks to me right now. But this is a spectacular view. And you can see chimneys all over the place. Here's another beautiful one. And up, high up, jutting up above those cliffs up there. So this is Kodachrome State Park, and there is a campground here. And it's a nice one, and it's 100% full. But I haven't run into anybody on this whole trail walk. And I've been on it for now a good hour and a half, I would say. Well, I've driven all over this park to try to find the least windy place as possible. And I found it. Where I'm setting up is really, really beautiful. Can you see the sunset? I, I was hoping to catch it sooner. It's already gone down, but you can see the one of the chimneys there with the sunset forming the silhouette in the, in the background. And we have another one right next to the truck. I don't know if you can see that or not. Walk around here. I'm literally set up right right here on this uh, parking lot. I'm going to go ahead and get leveled up, get the mount on, the scope on, all the equipment on, and then uh, it's perfectly clear skies. Beautiful skies. So I'll polar align, star align, and we'll figure out which target we're going to go after. But I mean, jeepers, look at that sunset. I hope you can see that. All right, I got to get to work. Well, we're polar aligned, star aligned, and we are indeed on the Elephant Trunk Nebula. I'm really glad I remembered the IC number, the catalog number, IC 1396, because I don't have cell coverage out here and I couldn't look it up. And it is freezing outside. <laughs> it is well below, I'd say it's about 28 degrees. And uh, we're in here taking refuge in the truck while I'm taking the darks. And then I'll go back out and check on it and start up the actual imaging. I'm not sure I'll be taking you out there with me because it's so cold. 
I might just hop out there, make sure it's all going well, and hop back in here. And then uh, in the morning, when it's warm, uh, we can show you the rig and what we were imaging with, and uh, hopefully it turns out. I am dealing with a full moon. The full moon is uh, not ideal, but uh, hey, uh, I put some light pollution filters on, and we'll see. We'll, we'll get a good image. I have no doubt about that. It's just unfortunate that there's a full moon, but you know, you work around these things. All right, we're gonna try and stay warm in here, aren't we, little buddy? You know, you're shaking. We've we've had a day. It's quite a day. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. <laughs> we just woke up just now and crawled out of the out of the truck. And I'll tell you, unfortunately, the wind was relentless last night. I did image all through the night, and I'll show it to you. Don't expect the greatest, because when the wind blows as hard as it did last night, it will jar that scope a little bit. And that's all it takes. When you're shooting something thousands of light years away, you're, you know, you can't... <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get the greatest image if the scope is jarred even the littlest of bit. But I'll tell you what, regardless of how that turns out, waking up to this, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Absolutely beautiful. I picked this spot right here because it's nestled inside of this protective basin but be that as it may uh, it was a windy night you know and what can you do but when you wake up to something like this it's about 7 a.m. right now you can't complain so I found a place to come in the future this particular trip the first night was too cloudy the second night we did image, but it was too windy. But we'll come again. But you know, this is this is what astrophotography is all about. It doesn't always work out to get the best image, but it's, it's an experience. You get out, you enjoy Mother Nature, and uh, there's a lot more a lot more to it than than just the imaging. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, pack all this stuff up, process it, process the picture, and I'll show it to you. Thanks for coming along with us. We had a lot of fun. Hope to see you again. Mm -hmm.